हेलो ओके सो वेलकम टू द लास्ट टॉक फॉर टुडे सो आई एम द लास्ट स्पीकर बिफोर योर वीकेंड ऑफ फ्रीडम सो ओके सो ओके सो फॉर वन गुड कवर इज आई दिस थिंग कॉल यूजिंग स्केफोल स्केफोल इज इसेंशियली अ टूल दैट आई रिसेंटली ट्राई प्रीटी डिसेंट सो लेट्स गो थ्रू दिस फर्स्ट थिंग अ लिटल बी अबाउट मी आई एम वे एन काइंड ऑफ कवर what i do and all so i'll just keep this light not necessary to repeat the same points okay so um let me start off with uh, a bit of context um so basically when i uh, when i was working with acronyms um initially acronyms was doing applications on uh, virtual machines and all so we we built binaries we dump it to virtual machines and only recently um this year we Um, there was a DevOps team that suddenly stated that okay, let's move to Kubernetes, and like everyone started panicking, running around the room asking what the hell is Docker, what is Kubernetes? So it's like layers of abstraction over one another, and no one knows what the hell is happening. When all in a, when the thing is, what application developers just want to do is just develop their application. They don't want to care about what is Docker stuff. Yeah. So, um, so when you develop applications, right? So mostly when the uh, applications are developed locally and they work well in, in local environments but then the thing is these applications still need to head to production and when you head to production then you have stuff like oh your application needs to authenticate to this thing called the account server and then like that doesn't work then and then now now like you find it like quite difficult to continue development work because like you need to test your integration with another service that's not really uh, your problem but then they made it Such that it is your problem. So, um, so this kind of uh, went round where on how you um, how DevOps things that you should be how the DevOps things in uh, Acronis kind of says like okay this is how you should do development work. So for us, what we need to do is develop the app, um, check that it's working well, then build the app into a container, and then push the app into a container registry. Then um, we need to build the Helm chart, which will absorb that uh, container, and then we need to push that Helm chart into the Helm registry, and then the final step is to use Ansible scripts to deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster. So you see, like so many steps just to get something done. And imagine this: like imagine you're trying to debug something, like, and you don't know what's the issue. So you usually what you usually do is like you know maybe add a logging statement here and there. So imagine you have to go through this cycle over and over again. Like it's just horrible. So um, then what they do is they propose like, hey, let's Jenkify everything. So we put Jenkins everywhere. So like, okay, you develop an app, you push the app, and then you need to click this button on Jenkins, and that will build your application, and then um, that will handle all these all these like. Uh, troublesome bits that you as the application developer don't exactly care about, but you still need to do in order to get your application to to production. So it's still quite painful, even with all this automation that's being done. So um, recently, I um, was trying out this scaffold, and this scaffold uh, happens to be a pretty um, interesting tool. Um, technically, we're not. Uh, I'm not exactly pushing it um, right now in my company too hard. Right now, it's still in the experimental phase. It seems to be working fine, and um, further experimenta experimentation is still required. So, um, if you want the links to scaffold, uh, those are the links there. So, um, so to demonstrate like what this scaffold thing do uh, best is, is to get it done via demo. So, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use this simple Golang application. And I'm going to try to deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster. Um, it kind of just says uh, "Hello World." It's a "Hello World" example, but trying to deploy it using the scaffold tool. So the first example uh, would be scaffold plus Golang uh, plus basic Kubernetes manif uh, manifest files. Where's my arrow?
Okay, so for scaffold, right, the main important file that we need to kind of take note is this file called um, scaffold.yaml. I mean, uh, where was it? This file here. Uh, can you all see it? Is all okay? Or do I need to make it bigger? All good? Okay. So um, for scaffold, uh, all we need to do is just basically um, uh, type in what, what um, Docker image that we need to put it to. Uh, in, this name, uh, in this case, like, okay, I'm going to push this Docker image to this project and going to deploy it to a GKE cluster. Um, Docker file, um, this Docker configuration is basically read this Docker file. Uh, the, the, basically, the Docker file is a pretty simple one. Why all it does is just takes a Golang application, just compiles it, dump it into an Alpine container, and just serves that. So it's nothing too fancy. So uh, just now, like I was saying, like you know, there's a whole bunch of steps just to get something to a, 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 a Kubernetes cluster, right? But with this whole setup, uh, what you can essentially do. Sorry. Okay, let me get into the uh, basic scaffold example. Okay, what do you all need to do? Uh, yeah, what you all need basically need to do is to run this command scaffold dev, and then with that, um, assuming that you are in the folder where which contains the scaffold uh, files the scaffold files and the docker container and the, all the required uh, de uh, deployables. By running this command, it will start to build the image, um, build the, the docker image, and then push it into uh, the GKE cluster, assuming that you configured your Kubernetes cluster already. So with that, uh, well, what you see here is basically the application has been deployed to a Kubernetes cluster and it's logging all the logs from the, uh, from the application, it's all dumped here. So if you see here, the log will be hello world uh, server started log. So this is here. So what we, uh, what we want to do is to, uh, to see w uh, what ports are being run in the cluster. So we kubectl get ports. So that's our hello world pod. So it's all deployed, it's all fine. Then we just need to get our services. So over here, um, what, what I'm trying to deploy is um, hello world with node pod. Uh, so this is just to be able to access the endpoint just to see that the, um, the app is returning something. So in this case, um, if we access the application on the Kubernetes uh, node port 30333, uh, we should get a response. So uh, next step is to actually get the, um, uh, the VM of the Kubernetes in order to access that node port. So hold on. So each, um, anytime you make a GKE, um, all the VMs will, uh, will be here, and this will be the public address. So for node port, uh, what is essentially happening is you expose a port on each, on, um, on all of the VMs in the cluster. So if you get this external IP, and then we enter in that uh, external IP and type in 30333, we should get the response. This is a sample. So if you, uh, if you see here, um, this is what is being, uh, uh, being uh, served, which is this is a sample, which is as it is correct. <coughs> but that's the thing. Like, um, so this kind of uh, takes care of uh, trying to deploy an application to um, Kubernetes. But just now I was saying, like, you know, let's say if you want to add like, one additional logging step just to get something, um, to, uh, to just check something out. So like, it sh these tools should make it easier. So let me demonstrate that. Okay, let's say um, you want to add another logging statement here. So you want to add such that uh, it, it has another logging statement, and then we can put 
welcome to cloud dev fest okay with that then what you see here is it's automatically building like i didn't need to do anything on safe it immediately starts deploying i didn't need to do anything i just need to wait for the application to deploy which will take a while um, because you still need to build your golang binary but yeah um, it's way better than the previous workflow where you know you have to push the application to a uh, git get it built via jenkins go through all those steps just to get it deployed to a kubernetes cluster just to test so that doesn't make sense this flow, flow is way easier so to, to prove my point um we will contact the endpoint again just to show that this log actually works so we go back we just uh, refresh this where's my arrow okay so this will still return uh, this is a sample but the logs will show welcome to cloud dfs as well so yeah it's a kind of a it short circuits your development workflow so uh, so the first example that i show was for kubernetes uh, kubernetes manifest files um, but this scaffold not only supports that it supports other deployable artifacts so one is let's say if you use helm uh, to package your application in your Kubernetes cluster, uh, in your Kubernetes cluster, you use Helm to deploy your applications. So, let me stop this. Go out, and then we go to um, scaffold Helm. So for scaffold Helm, um, let me close this. For scaffold helm, um, the, there is a hello world helm chart that we are trying to deploy. Um, it's here, this hello world um, helm chart. Let, let's take the look at the values. The values, all it takes in is the, um, the image that we are trying to deploy. And that value or project ID will be injected in. Um, we can put that value within the scaffold.yaml and then like Hey, uh, but you can basically tell uh, the scaffold YAML like, hey, when you see this image, image uh, value, uh, replace it in the values .yaml file. So if you run that same command, uh, scaffold uh, dev, it basically does the same thing, which is basically to deploy your application, but as a Helm deployable. So it doesn't push the Helm chart as like a Helm chart immediately because you don't exactly um, need an unfinished Helm chart yet. So this one just helps you deploy the cluster for just for testing purposes. So yeah, with that, um, it is it's deployed. So if you, if you want, we can uh, go to a new shell. We can check that the thing is deployed, kubectl get ports. And because this is a new deployment, if we, to CTL get service, we have the thing there with a new port, not no port. So I'm not gonna like do, I'm not gonna like check this uh, endpoint because basically it does, does the same thing. Like this, it will just return this as a sample, which is nothing interesting. The last one, uh, the last demo that I want to show, which is kind of interesting, is let's say um, the example where. Um, your developers like really, really hate Docker. They don't want to install Docker on your computer. And no matter how many times you try to tell them like Docker is great, they say you are lying. Um, so in, in that case, like what do you do? Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to quit Docker desktop. So basically, I have no Docker on my computer. Um, I'm going to switch over. Okay, wait, let me cancel this first. Okay. Um, go back, let me head over to Scaffold Kaniko. So there's this interesting tool um, called Kaniko. Um, I don't have the link with me, but you can just easily search it on Google. Uh, uh, it's a tool that allows you to build your Docker container on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, yeah. So I, I'll leave it at that. Uh, the, the README on the Kaniko project actually tells uh, a bit more details. I don't exactly know how it works. It's, it basically sounds like magic. 
So let me clear this to bring it up. So this scaffold canicle, um, what we need to do is to um, provide this canicle that, that secret, which is we need to create a secret file on the Kubernetes cluster so that it can access uh, services like GCS. So because what this canicle does is it will take whatever files that you have here, it will push it to a GCS bucket or any other storage uh, bucket. Uh, like Azure bucket or AWS S3. So it, yeah, it can do that. And then from there, it will use that bucket to serve as your yeah, storage system to create your, your Docker container. Yeah, that part, that's why I'm not sure how to explain that. It's kind of uh, magical. So in the, uh, in the scaffold of YAML, uh, what we just need to do is just add the Kaniko um, in the artifact, uh, in, the, in this like, scaffold YAML uh, configuration. And then I just need to check that they have the secrets inside the cluster. So we have uh, what we need to do before, this, uh, before running the scaffold.dev. Uh, scaffold dev is to create this Kaniko secret. Uh, Kaniko secret is run via this command. kubectl create secret generic Kaniko dash secret. Um, this, this command is actually available on the Kaniko um, GitHub page. So just the, that one is just uh, following, following the example. Um, then the next step will be to just run scaffold dev. So just a reminder, um, I'm do, I don't have Docker running right now. So essentially, any Docker container I'm trying to build is not done locally. It is done on the GKE cluster. So you'll see that the logs are way different as compared to uh, the previous time that I run. So there you see that create Kaniko secret, whatever. Then you see like these weird logs. So you just uh, let it run. So essentially what it's uh, doing right now is it just pushed files from my local computer to GCS bucket. And then it uses that GCS bucket, uh, the, the files there, and like imports it into the cluster to start building the container. So it'll take a while. So right now we are at, okay, we are at the run C go enable step. So if we take a look at the Docker file, we have this step right now on Kaniko. Okay, then um, right now, It's almost finished. So basically, what is Dying trying to do is almost the same as a Docker container. Docker, essentially, every command in the Docker file is essentially taking a snapshot of what happened and saving it as a, as a layer. So essentially, this is what Kaniko also do. So with that, um, yeah, application is deployed, and there's no Docker on my, on my, on my local computer. So just to prove that it's working, I just put kubectl get ports. We have a port there. kubectl get services. And uh, yeah, um, the node port is there with a different no, uh, with a different port ID because the, this is a different deployment. So yeah, that's my uh, kind of the last demo that I have. Let me go back to the slides. <coughs> I can skip this, I can skip this. So there are many more other stuff that can, uh, Scaffold can do. So you can essentially, what, uh, some of the stuff you can do is actually you can add like Kubernetes profiles, like you can add a development Kubernetes profile and like you can run Scaffold dev dash development profile or dash testing profile and that will like target your your deployment to different Kubernetes clusters. So that's all possible. And there's other integration as well, like um, there's this tool that there's out there also called Jeep, which helps you create Docker containers, but for Java applications. So if you use Java with Docker containers, it's slightly harder. So Jeep, apparently they say it makes it slightly easier. Not sure how. Um, and yeah, so all those, stuff that I'm talking about, like what you can do with the scaffold tool, you can see them all in this uh, link, uh, github.com, um, 
um, yeah, just that link. So you want you can take a picture here. And that's all I have. Okay. okay. Oh, uh, before I end, uh, any questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so with that, um, basically all the sessions are now over. So with that, we come to the closing part of this the Cloud Dev Fest. So, but before we close uh, this whole day, um, there is this thing that you know we keep asking you to do. Um, so, a Andrew. <laughs> get honest. So you had to sit through all those presentations just to get this giveaway. Very worth it. Okay, so thanks everyone for coming today. We're on two more right now. Uh, so five for a time. Uh, let's see if this actually works. Uh, we're on the back here. Because we're uh, browser. Oh, this part only. Okay, here's the choice of the browser. Here's the choice of the browser. We just have five.